Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ashley Solidar, and here I am joined with Billy Weber. And today we are going to be joining you for a Livingston versus Mount Olive girls basketball game. Incoming is the Livingston Lancers, who are 1 and 6 on the season, versus the Mount Olive Marauders, who are 0 and 6. Starting for Mount Olive will be number 13, Maddie Haven. Number five, Jordan Bateau. Number four, Caden Shaw. Number 11, Gabby Drucks. And number 23, Sydney Sarasoli. Today, we hope to see both teams get back on track with a win and continue the success of their seasons. I know both teams definitely are going to be very excited for a win today. I know both teams are hungry. They're looking for that win. They're looking to bring up their record this far this season. Now, today we have two teams that are definitely extremely hungry, looking for that win. We have smiles across players' faces. We have players looking game ready. So a few key names to look out for for today's game uh, would definitely be Mia Viola. Uh, so far this season, she has 36 points, which is definitely very strong. She's going to be a key player for Livingston. And also a name to look out for on the uh, Livingston team would be Audrey Aubrey Cohen. Um, so far this season, she has, no, I'm sorry, Lila, F Lila Feldman, who has 42 points this season. She's definitely going to be a key player coming out here. And then for Mount Olive, there's Jordan Nataro. So far this season, she has 43 points and just going off of um, that record so far, she's definitely going to be a key player, a key name to look out for on the court today. One of the major storylines coming into this game is how Maya Viola, Livingston's second leading scorer, will not be playing. She was called out for injury at the last minute and will not be available for this game. Now it looks, um, it looks like she has a twin sister also on this team, um, going by the name of... I believe Lexi? Yeah, Lexi Viola. She looks like she's also a pretty strong player for this team. And right now we're going to have tip-off. The opening tip-off is up, and it is taken by Mount Olive, having the first possession of the game. Jordan Nataro taking it up court now, and like said, she's definitely a very viable player to this team and will uh, hopefully show out today. Mount Olive will need her to get hot and hit some shots for them to win this game as she swings it around to the corner. Working the ball back to Nataro. She's touching the ball a lot. And we have a travel on the opening possession of the game. The possession is going to switch to Livingston. Now, Asher, you definitely saw some strong ball movement coming out of Mount Olive. It's absolutely phenomenal the way they're able to work it up and down the court. Jordan Nataro really leads their attack as she acts as the point guard, swinging the ball around, trying to find an open lane. Livingston has the ball in the top of the key, trying to get something started on their first offensive possession. The drive to the basket is denied. They get the ball in the paint. The shot is up, and it is missed, but rebounded by Livingston yet again. Now that was uh, Kylie Torney putting up the uh, first shot of the game. And that ball went off of Mount Olive, bounced off her leg. So Livingston will retain possession as the shot clock, shot clock dwindles. The inbound in layup, and it is good. The first point of the game is scored by Livingston to make it 2-0 off of that layup. And that was uh, Amanda Weinberger. Amanda Weinberger is Livingston center. She acts mostly in the paint and has a defensive, many defensive responsibilities. The ball is inbounded out of bounds through the hands of number 13 for Mount Olive. That pass did not find its location as Livingston gets possession again, looking to build off of their strong first offensive possession. Number 23 for Livingston drives the ball down court, finds the open person behind who brings it to the top of the key. One thing I've noticed is that Mount Olive really likes to swing the ball around to find the open man. We mind Livingston tries to go with the man's man matchups and drive through with their best players. And that shot is denied. A good block for Mount Olive. It was unclear who got that as she was surrounded by many players. And they're quickly driving down the court. Have the ball. The three. It is good. And that was Jordan Nataro. Like I said, definitely a name to look out for right there. And another thing that I noticed is Livingston's definitely a younger team than Mount Olive, so we'll see how that plays out today. Mm -hmm. Jordan Nataro gets hot with her first three-pointer of the game to, Mount, to give Mount Olive an early 3-2 lead, but it is still early in this game. 
Livingston sizing up the competition, working the ball around, getting the ball to their players. So a good, de good defense here by number 13 for Mount Olive, stopping Livingston from advancing at all as they're kept outside of the three-point line, almost a steal, but managed to be saved by number 34 for Livingston. They're unable to penetrate the Mount Olive offense. Getting back to Weinberger, her shot is missed, but the rebound goes back to Livingston's way. Livingston is living inside of Mount Olive's zone right now, but cannot seem to break through their defense. Only three shots so far this game, despite lots of ball movement and possession. The three is missed, and a good rebound by number five. Jordan Dataro is taking it up the court. Weinberger's definitely a name that was not expected today, but she is definitely showing out for her team. Weinberger has really been the focal point of the attack so far, trying to be a big body in the paint to get the support. And the three from Mount Olive is missed off the rim. And a, and a fight for the rebound, but it comes down with the Livingston, who moves the ball back down court, swings it out to the wing, the drive, the shot, and it is just off of the rim. It seems we have a Livingston ball on a very, very close rebound. Number 32 coming up with a big grab there for Livingston. The game is definitely extremely fast-paced and a great watch today so far. Livingston swings the ball back to the wing, the three, and it is good. Number 22 for Livingston gets on the board for the first time, makes it a 5-3 game. Lila Feldman absolutely drained that shot. That is Livingston's top scorer, and Livingston will need her to get hot and support, and support Weinberger today. They are missing their, oh, never mind, a two there. Absolute drive by um, Shaw, Shaw over here. That was absolutely a phenomenal Shaw play Shaw right gets there. herself on the board early as another three from Feldman is missed, but the rebound is made by Livingston. And the layup is good to make it seven to five Livingston. That was number 32, Kylie Torney. Feldman had a good shot there, a good look she thought she would have, but was not able to get it. And the steal is not able to happen. Number 23 for Livingston getting in close, their point guard. In the box, Weinberger turns over the ball back to Livingston. Driving down the court is Feldman as she looks to continue to find more points on the board. And it is that shot is blocked by number four for Mount Olive. Had no good open look there. And it seems number 13 Mount Olive has an open lane and she makes the layup to tie this game back up at seven. Mount Olive's counterattacking really worked there, applying the pressure hard on Livingston. Out of bounds, and Livingston retains possession. One thing I've noticed so far, and uh, something I definitely didn't expect with such a young team, it looks like 23 just got subbed out. For number 15. But one thing that I definitely didn't expect is how fast-paced both teams are playing. They're both extremely aggressive, and I guess um, the younger Livingston team's definitely proving themselves right here. Yes, Livingston has four seniors on the roster, three of which are currently inactive. So the younger guns are going to have to show out, but they have been doing well so far this game. Into the paint, and that is a foul on Mount Olive. Livingston will inbound the ball. Livingston has really done a good job of maintaining pressure so far this game, despite not being able to generate much offensive force. They have had the ball in Mount Olive's area. They have been passing the ball well and hope to see some shots falling soon. Feldman inbounds the ball, and that is scored. A layup for Livingston, number 32, to make it a 9-7 game. Kylie Torney absolutely showing out today. It's unbelievable how much pressure she's able to apply offensively. That is her second two-pointer of the game made, putting her up to four total for the game as she continues to apply pressure both offensively and defensively. Mount Olive is swinging the ball around the three-point arc, trying to find an open lane. Get it to number 13. And the shot, the three, is off the rim, but the rebound by Mount Olive keeps possession, but they do not make the pass to keep the ball. Livingston will inbound the ball. That number 13 for Mount Olive is really putting a lot of shots up so far. Mount Olive's doing an amazing job of moving around the three-point arc, and I think that's definitely going to help them today, seeing the way that Livingston plays their defense. So far, we have seen two totally different offensive games where Livingston has really worked inside the paint through Weinberger and Sydney, but that three is up, and it is missed. And the rebound by number 32, Sydney again, gives it to Weinberger. That layup is in. Livingston takes an 11 to 7 lead, our biggest lead of the game so far. And a timeout taken by Mount Olive. I guess you could say today, when in doubt, give it to Weinberger and she's going to make the shot. So uh, one thing that I've noticed is 
neither team really is taking a pause. It's definitely a lot of back and forth. Livingston's playing very hard and pressing. They're pressing a lot up at half court, and that's um, slowing down Mount Olive quite a bit, which is forcing them to move around the three-point arc. At the same time, Mount Olive's doing a great job of getting that ball movement in and really trying to create opportunities. But Livingston's defense is just so uptight in their face that they're doing a great job at holding it. Weinberger's definitely showing out today, and Jordan's doing a great job for her team. It seems that Mount Olive is really going to have to live on the counterattack here as Livingston applies great defensive pressure to stop them. However, with the amount of shots they take and the amount of up close in Mount Olive's paint they are, the counterattack is open and we will see if Mount Olive can capitalize. It's really a great watch so far. It's only the first quarter, but we definitely have ourselves a game today. The ball is right around the logo, swung out to the corner. Corner three is just barely off, hits the rim, but the rebound made by Mount Olive, and the layup is good. That makes it a 9-11 to 11 game. Number 13 for Mount Olive. That was Jeez. an excellent job by Madeline Hazen, putting that right back up at the net. Oh, the three for Livingston is out. Bounces off the rim and out of bounds. Madeline Hayes has really been the focal point for attack today so far for Mount Olive, which is somewhat surprising, but she's been applying, con applying consistent pressure, getting good open looks. We'll, she we'll see if she can capitalize in the future. And we see her with the ball again. And Livingston with the double team gets the steal, but there was a foul on the play. It looks like a travel, and Mount Olive will retain possession. Definitely an aggressive game. Scores 9-11 with Livingston in the lead. The ball is inbounded all the way back to number five. She dribbles the ball up, trying to break through the Livingston defense herself, trying to change the pace of play. Gives it back to Madeline Hayes, who swings it over to, back to the logo. Inside to the paint, and that pass is deflected. Was not able to retain that ball, and Livingston will regain possession yet again. Livingston's shown out with a lockdown defense. A ball, if it's in the air, will certainly be knocked down today. There's no easy pass being made for either team this game. Livingston has their two guards, Lila Feldman and number 23, having the ball. The ball is swung out to Feldman. Feldman has an open look, but she drives to the lane. Pass back to Weinberger in the middle. Weinberger puts the shot up, but it is missed, and she gets her own rebound, swings it back out to the top of the three. A corner, open look. Feldman has an open look on the sideline. She tries to step back, but it's no good. Swings it out to Sydney in the corner. She's out of position there, but she's able to actively engage in the offense still from that area. And it looks like Feldman is calling for the ball, wanting it. She gets it where she wanted. Is she able to do anything? She is not. This Mount Olive defense is holding strong, not letting Livingston get anything. And that pass is deflected. And that will be a charge. Livingston will retain possession still, despite that ball nearly being turned over. Both teams are certainly aggressive, maybe even too aggressive. But hey, we're going to see how this plays out. Mount Olive makes a substitute, checking in number 54 and someone else. But Livingston regains possession. The ball is swung back to Feldman, who takes a quick three, and that is off the rim. But the rebound is made by Livingston, and this shot is blocked. And that rebound for Mount Olive was made by number 54, who just checked in the game, making an immediate difference. The ball with Madeline Hayes, a good pass, trying to drive to the basket, but it is denied. That pass is not going anywhere. And Livingston on the counterattack passes it up. Passes it back, and that layup makes it to make it a 13-9 game with 33 seconds left in this first quarter. Let's see if Mount Olive can uh, shorten up the gap right here. Mount Olive trying to apply pressure and score before this quarter ends to keep it a close game. The ball is swung to the corner, an open look, and it is just barely off the rim, but a big rebound from Mount Olive that they cannot come down with. Just couldn't handle that ball as Livingston seems to have the final offensive possession of the quarter. Feldman holding the ball, swinging it around the corner, trying to find an open look. Top of the key, the shot for Livingston. It is off the off the board, but Weinberger gets the rebound and a fadeaway to end the quarter. She is denied off the rim. Now a player I definitely want to talk to you guys about is number 54, Mia Zebi, who just got subbed in. She may only be a junior, but this is actually, I think, her second or third year on the varsity court, so she's definitely built up some experience over the time. And we can see that experience and prowess in play as when she first checked in the game, the very first offensive position, she came down with a clutch rebound for Mount Olive to take away Livingston's offensive pressure. Both teams are on the sideline, absolutely breathing heavy just from how intense this game has been so far. By the end of the first quarter, neither team had let up with pressure. Both teams were definitely going at it, playing extremely strong defense and even stronger offense. Um, the score is 13, 19, 13 to 9, and we'll see how this gap either continues to expand or gets smaller over the course of this game. 
and Livingston's offense has mostly been run through Weinberger and Feldman in this first quarter. Meanwhile, almost all of the offensive production from Mount Olive has come from Hayes. We will see if we see any change in either of those facts in the second quarter, which is just about to kick off. Livingston opens with a four-point lead, and Mount Olive will try to counter. Another thing that's very important to notice with Livingston is Mount Olive plays a player right in the middle of the paint. That seems to be Gabby Drux, number 11. And they are doing a great job of locking down any momentum she can get. They're absolutely swarming every single person with the ball and just playing great uptight defense, which is showing to be an extreme struggle for the Mount Olive team. The Livingston centers, number 44, Weinberger, number 32, Sydney, Viola, have both played a great defensive game so far, stopping anything. And a steal from Feldman as the ball is passed up. Livingston on an opening drive to start the second quarter and misses the layup. The rebound is made by Madeline Hayes, who runs the ball back down court, trying to put a pressure on this counterattack. Inbounded, oh, and Viola gets bodied by Weinberger. Those two big centers have really been duking out in the minimal time they've been against each other, but it looks to be a show for the rest of this game. The three for Livingston is off, and Hayes comes down with another rebound. She has been all over the place for Mount Olive today, providing both offense and defense. But this steal from number three by Livingston to get possession back, but a bad pass nearly sends the ball out of bounds, but Livingston manages to regain possession. Another thing to note is number three, Aubrey Cohen. She may not have the points up to her name as of right now, but she's definitely creating a ton of opportunity for this team. Feldman with a corner three, barely misses, and the rebound is made by Mount Olive, who brings the ball up with a more slower play through Madeline Hayes. The ball is being swung around there, trying to create any open look. As Livingston goes with a double team, and it is stolen by Aubrey Cohen. It is sent back up, number 23 with the rebound. I'm out with the layup, and she makes it to make it a 15 to nine Livingston lead. Madeline Hazen is actually only a freshman. You would not believe it seeing her skills out there on the court. She's the way, performing absolutely impeccable. That is true. The way she dominates the game, both offensively and defensively, and seems to always be hustling as she's come back trying to try get the chase down block, and she fouls on the shot. Managed to get close but nothing good, and Livingston will have two free throws here as they try to push the lead. Number 22 up there at the free throw line, Lila, Lila Feldman. Livingston's top scorer, she's dangerous from the, three point, from the free throw line. You don't want to give her any open looks, and here she goes to their first free throw. And, and it is it. good, 16 to nine. Yeah, absolutely no surprise there with the way that she's performing this game. Um, she's probably going to make the second, let's be honest here. The defense is ready for the rebound. The shot is up. And it is in and out of the hoop. But Sydney Viola comes out with the rebound, swings it back out to Lila Feldman, who shoots and barely misses. Two in and out shots for there for Livingston as they were not able to see it fall. And now, not all of driving down the court, putting offensive pressure. Number four with the three, and is just barely off the rim as she is denied. Livingston is bringing the ball down court here. Swings it to Sydney Viola, who is not able to come up with it as number 54. 54. As uh, Mia Zebi, she takes her down to the ground. It's absolutely unbelievable how physical these girls are today, and it's definitely a great watch so far. We have seen some intense action come in the middle of, of the paint, where it seems that there's always a battle. As Mia Zebi, with another steal off the inbound, rejects that ball. It went straight out of bounds, so Livingston manages to re to retain possession, but she is not allowing anything offensively to happen near her. There's six minutes left in the quarter, just about. Weinberger passes it out to Cohen, who drives to the basket. She is getting no good open look, swings it back over to Feldman. Weinberger with the ball, outside, three for Cohen. She misses, denied by the rebound. That looks like it was going in from here, but Sydney Viola gets the rebound and is not able to put the shot down as Mount Olive regains possession. Jordan Nataro taking it back up the court. Nataro is a, is a name that you want to hear more if you're a Mount Olive fan. She has been their most dominant offensive player of late, and we need to see her to get hot for them to stay in this game as Livingston brings the ball back down court with Feldman. Feldman with the ball. She passes it up. They're trying to find open look. Feldman from the three. That is a two-pointer, and she makes it. Barely outside of the three-point range, but still a good score. Feldman and Cohen absolutely racing down the court, bringing it to the offensive every single time. And, oh, but almost a steal by Feldman as she's always hustling, always going for the ball, always trying her hardest to put her team in the best position to win. And it seems that the sporting cast around her really responds to that in a good way. But Jordan Nataro. Jordan Nataro makes her first basket in a while for Mount Olive. She's going to need to get going. 
Not all of us trying to close the gap. They're gonna need a defensive stop here. Aubrey Cohen swings at the Feldman, who sends it back to Weinberger, and Sidney Viola is able to keep that ball in bounds somehow. Feldman and Livingston playing hard, despite the ball nearly going out, managing to hustle and keep it in play. Oh, a big block there by Mia Zebi, not allowing that ball to get to Viola. The absolutely physical play style that Mia Zebi has is definitely seeming to be very difficult for Livingston, as number 32 puts up a basket, Kylie Torian. Now, even though Mia is very physical, there's definitely some very physical girls on the Livingston side as well. And an immediate travel, it seems, for Mount Olive, an offensive miscue that they cannot have as they're trying to close this gap. Livingston regains possession as they would have to inbound the ball. Both teams really are not letting anyone get into the paint. They're trying very hard to not let those easy layups get in. It seems like Livingston's keeping Mount Olive at the three which actually might be what Mount Olive wants in this situation. The three-pointer for Livingston is good from the corner as they glow their lead to 23 to 11. That was a, drained by Jordan Fursco. A 12-point lead for Livingston with just under four minutes left here in the first half. Mount Olive tries to get something going as they swing the ball around the three around the three-point arc, trying desperately to find an opening against Livingston's defense. Mia Zebi calling for the ball, but she does not get it. This shot is just off. Mount Olive, though, regains possession, won the rebound. However, that pass was not able to find the hands of Jordan Nataro as it slides out of bounds and goes back to Livingston. Livingston's definitely on the shorter side here, but that's not stopping their physicality and their ability to score. Clearly something's working for them here today. What I've seen from the Livingston girls so far is constant hustle, constantly working hard, never letting up. They play until the whistle is blown. It's at three from Feldman. It goes in and out, but Weinberger with the rebound is not good as Mount Olive regains possession. The ball is being brought down the court here. Nataro trying to find a person to pass the ball. She gets off to number 10 who puts up a little floater. It was very close, but the, however, the rebound is back for Mount Olive and Livingston regains possession after that second shot there. A big pass down court to Aubrey Cohen oh. as it slips through her hands. Almost had a free basket there, but no. You can see the absolute feistiness in number three from Livingston. She really wants it today, and I think she's going to get it. Ball is being brought up here by Jordan Nataro. She passes it out, trying to find a look. Swings it out to the corner, and that ball was thrown straight out of bounds. No hands on it. And it seems that we are going to be taking a timeout? No. I don't know why that blew then. Well, anyways, Livingston will, eat, will inbound the ball. It is Aubrey Cohen and Jordan Frisco leading the attack for Livingston right now, with Lila Feldman off the court for a break. Sandy Sarasoli with the steal. An immediate steal of Jordan Frisco as Mount Olive looks to push the, on the attack. They were not able to capitalize on the 2-1-1 -on now that they have to work through the entire Livingston defense. However, Livingston defense is falling apart and crumpling. Keep on attacking the ball, but... Livingston's impeccable defense is all to uh, credit for that play right there. If you saw Jordan Nataro look for help, she couldn't find it, and that's why the ball ended up coming out, but it's Mount Olive ball again. As a foul for Livingston there allows Mount Olive to retain possession as they reset their attack with Jordan Nataro. Nataro. They're swinging the ball around into the paint and back out. Jordan Nataro for three is just off the rim. She has been so close this game but has not been able to see her shots fall. But the immediate steal to get the ball back by Jordan Nataro. She drives the ball down court. She goes, looks for the layup, and a foul by Jordan Frisco. And, and one! one! Jordan Nataro with the and one for, Livingston, for Mount Olive as they... Making a 23 to 13 game and a look to continue to build on this lead. Yeah, I just can't help but get excited in moments like that. I mean, it, I was not expecting anything to happen there, but she manages to power through the foul, put the layup down, and now is a chance for a three-point play. Jordan being the absolute playmaker she is, there's no surprise there. Ataro's free throw is good. Just as there was no surprise with that free throw as well. With just over two minutes left in the first half here, we have a nine-point Livingston lead as Livingston's best player is resting before the half. We'll see if Mount Olive can use that moment to attack and to truly close this gap. Livingston keeps moving the ball around. Jordan Frisco, she's been a playmaker so far. She, they tried to get her the ball often. Weinberger in the middle, finds Cohen. Back to Weinberger. Weinberger with the layup, and it is denied. Jordan Frisco tries to take the immediate steal back, but she's not able to as Nataro gets the ball back from Jordan Mount Olive. Jordan Frisco might not be the tallest player on the court, but she's definitely making it happen one way or another. She runs hard, and she's always where she needs to be. Currently double-teaming Jordan Nataro. 
two on them. They have Frisco and uh, another player, number 14. Nataro finds the open person, puts up a three, just barely off the backboard. If Nataro starts hitting those threes, we have a different game. The ball is swung over. Aubrey Cohen just rejected by the rim. Nataro driving the ball for Livingston. Two on one. Livingston has two defenders and a foul on her. They cannot seem to stop her today. Extremely physical game out there today. Now, um, I'm interested to see how some of these players end up getting tired out. You see um, Lila Cohen, Jordan Fursco, and Jordan Nataro from Mount Olive side running up the ball every single time. The, another foul there allows Mount Olive to keep possession as they try to find an opening to score before the end of the half and truly make it a close game. Jordan Nataro being a multi-sport athlete, also playing women's varsity soccer for Mount Olive, I definitely don't, don't see how she will end up getting tired by the time the end of the game comes, but there's only one way to find out. If she, manage, if she gets tired, then Madeline Hayes will really have to step up for Mount Olive. We have some impeccable athletes on both sides. Livingston's attack so far has been led by Weinberger and Lila Feldman. Meanwhile, Mount Olive has worked through Madeline Hayes and Jordan Nataro. Mount Olive gets the ball, swings it to the top of the key, and that is barely missed. And almost a clutch point for Mount Olive. Livingston brings the ball back down with 35 seconds left in the half. Gets the ball to Weinberger, who swings it out. The far two is just missed, and the rebound is gotten by Mount Olive as they try to attack here before the half ends. And as you may see, number 15, Lexi Viola, is out there, and we'll see what she can do for her sister. As a reminder, Maya Viola, Livingston's top scorer, is not playing today, and that too is just missed by Mount Olive. But however, her sister Lexi is still out there, still trying to make a difference wherever she can. And you can definitely see the height out there on the court. That's definitely going to be a major advantage for Livingston coming out. And at the end of the first half, we have Livingston 23, Mount Olive 14. It is a nine-point lead for Livingston as we go into the half, and we will see what type of adjustments will be made. And now, I'm here joined by... Peter Zaccalillo. Peter, so what have you seen so far as you've been watching this game? I've been seeing a lot of press and a lot of aggressive defense. I've also been seeing a lack of um, good passes thrown by Mount Olive. I've been seeing a lot of rush passes, a lot of balls thrown out of bounds, a lot of balls overturned to the defense at the beginning of a drive down the court. I feel like if Mount Olive wants to come back in this one, they're down by around nine right now. If they want to come back, they need to slow down their drives, make better passes, and overall just calm down. I've seen Livingston on a blitz defense for most of the um, half. Uh, they've been pressing up until around the last two minutes. Uh, they've kind of laid off it a little bit, but if Mount Olive uh, sees it again, uh, they should make the adjustment. Make the adjustment. Mount Olive has really run their offense through Nataro and Nataro and Madeline Hazen. I'm sorry, Madeline. She's a freshman. She's a stud out there. I forgot your name for a second. But anyways, Jordan Nataro and Madeline Hazen will really have to step up for Mount Olive here in the second half. They really have to take time on their passes. Mount Olive loves, loves to swing the ball around the three-point arc, trying to find an open look. That has been represented well by Jordan Nataro's many, many three-point attempts so far this game. If she manages to see more of those fall, we will see a different type of game here. Yeah, I do really like that swing around type of offense where they swing the ball around the horn. Uh, it's a great way to get your guys open, and if you find an open man, if you calm down and find the ball to the right people, you will get more points in this game. Exactly. They're trying to find the open looks, and their offense is running well. It's just been some slight miscues that have stumped them. Livingston's defense has been led by their two bigs, uh, Weinberger and Kylie Torin. They will continue to apply both offensive and defensive pressure in this second half here and look to open Livingston's lead and retain the offense. They have been forcing a lot of turnovers this game. I've seen a lot of balls go out of bounds because of those two playmakers. Uh, I would like to see more of that coming into the second half, see if Mount Olive can make the adjustment against them and figure out how to outdo that. An important factor for Mount Olive to consider is at the end of the half, their final two offensive possessions, Jordan Nataro is driving through Livingston's defense where the only way Livingston was able to stop her was to foul her, was to foul her and to 
force her to the line. She made her free throw on that three point play with the and one, and we will hope to see her apply more pressure so far. That is a very important aspect of the sport. Free throws are a very underrated aspect. I've seen games won and lost because of made or missed three free throws. It is a great thing to make a two point play with a foul on it, but if you can make that extra point, it can change an entire ball game. We would like to see more from Catalin Shaw for Mount Olive in the second half offensively. She is their third leading scorer on the season with 17 points. She also does a lot on the board, providing them with many rebounds and assists, but she will need to make her offensive presence known more in the second half of this game in order for Mount Olive to close this gap and to get back in this game. We have around six minutes until the next half will start. Do you expect to see any changes from either team to start the half, or do you expect to see the same starting five out there? Uh, I expect to see the same starting five out there. I do expect to see Jordan Natara out there. She has been the main playmaker today for this team. Knowing Coach Redmond, uh, he is definitely talking to his teammates about making adjustments on those balls that are getting thrown out of bounds or turned over. He is definitely working with them. Livingston, for Livingston offensively, they would like to see Aubrey Cohen put a little more shots in the basket. She has done a lot this season, scoring 22 points so far, including four three-pointers, leading the team in three-pointers made. We, we would like to see her provide more offensive pressure as Livingston tries to grow their lead and put Mount Olive down. So who have you noticed are the leading scorers of this game so far? Uh, so far for Livingston, it has been Weinberger, ooh, excuse me, Weinberger, and it has been Lila Feldman. Weinberger comes into this game with 28 points on the season and 53 rebounds. She makes her presence known both offensively and defensively, getting the boards for Livingston, allowing them to retain possession and allowing their playmakers to work. She has been a huge support for Jordan Vitar, not for Jordan Vitar, she's been a huge support for Lila Feldman in this first half as every shot that is missed seems to fall back into Weinberger's hands. Livingston's bigs of Weinberger and Kylie Torin have really been able to keep Livingston in possession of the ball and allow the offense to work. That is another thing that can annoy a team. Constant rebounds from the same person. It does get annoying after a while knowing that every shot that goes up, that person is most likely going to get the rebound. You need to work around that. You need to be able to get the rebounds. And if you let the same person get it over and over and over again, it can really start annoying a team. One adjustment that I expect to see Mount Olive make is to give more time to the junior Mia Zebi. Even though she has scored 16 points on the season, in the limited amount of action she has had, she has gotten a rebound, provided great defense with two blocks and a steal, and has been a big body that, that Mount Olive really needs to combat Weinberger and Torin for Livingston. If she's able to stay in the game more, I expect to see a difference in the pace of this game. That is another thing, seeing the defense of Mount Olive, Mia Zebi, if she can put on a really good defensive performance in the second half, start limiting Livingston's scores, this, this lead can get cut down in the first few minutes of the next half. We have seen Jordan Frisco act as the main point guard for Livingston. And while she has not put too many shots into the basket yet, she has been facilitating tons of offense, moving the ball around, finding the open person, and allowing Livingston to get into the paint and attack. I agree. This game is just getting started. This can go either way. I do really want to see adjustments out of both of these teams, especially Mount Olive since they are trailing. I do want to see this score get a little bit closer when we go into the second half, see if we can make this a little bit more interesting. Mount Olive has really led their offense around the three-pointer as they have not been able to get past Livingston's bigs and get into the paint for the easy two points. If that, it will continue and they will not be able to work into the paint in the second half of this game. You would need to see those three-pointers, specifically from Jordan Nataro, to start falling. She has barely missed on a few of them, and if she makes even two of those, this is a completely different game. I agree. If you pass it around the horn and run that pass around the horn offense, the whole point is to find someone in the paint. And if, it might take a little while, but as soon as you find someone in the paint, you need to be able to give the ball up. You don't need to rush it. You do need to make a good pass. And if you get the ball in the paint, it is the center's job to make that bucket and to have everyone crash on that rebound. I know we've seen, was it Weinberger who keeps getting, Weinberger all, keeps all, getting the rebounds? all the boards? When we do that inside pass, and we if we miss the shot, I do want to see everyone start crashing and start trying to take rebounds away from Weinberger if we want to put shots back up to recover points. Mm -hmm. That is another aspect that I really hope to see coming that, in the second half. That is true. Mount Olive will need to apply more pressure, get into the paint, 
However, one important factor that we also saw at the end of the game was Wilmington's inability to defend. Jordan Nataro was fouled multiple times on our final drive, as well as Wilmington's defense started crashing into the paint and collapsing in on itself, allowing the shooters on the outside to get open looks. If the, pat if the ball can find the open shooter, we might quickly see a change of pace here. That is true. The halftime adjustments are currently being made from Mount Olive in the locker room as they prepare to close the gap on this nine point lead for Livingston. Yes. One other thing I want to point out, I want to notice, I want to get back to Livingston's press. What I noticed from the very start of the game was a press immediately coming out of the court. Mount Olive's first possession, they were pressing, they were trying to get the ball, trying to throw Mount Olive's defense off, and it has worked so far. I, we've been seeing a lot of turnovers from Mount Olive, and even from the moment they could take the ball out of bounds, you see at least one or two Livingston defenders on them. Um, yeah, they're trying to try, try and get the defenders on them. Move, please. Thank you. Anyways, uh, sorry, someone's blocking our review of the, what's going on there. Well, yeah. uh, say that one more time. What were you talking about? I've, uh, uh, the press coming right out of the out-of-bounds line when we're throwing it in. That's I, true. I see a lot of Livingston defenders immediately push push up, try to get the ball. It does throw. It did throw Manov's defense off, and it might continue to if we don't make that adjustment. It was an interesting play. You don't usually see that much of a press coming immediately out of the gates. But it has been working so far, so I do applaud Livingston for that. Mm -hmm. And Mia Zebi would be a major factor in stopping that. We saw in her limited action, Livingston inbounded the ball, which she immediately batted away and did not allow them to win that. We expect to see more for offensively and more time from Mia Zebi in the second half, but Jordan Nataro is really the key piece from Mount Olive as she looks to get hot. Yes, I, I think we need to keep her in for as long as possible. I know you need to come out every now and then for breaks, but it is um, very essential that you keep her in for a majority of the game. She has been leading point scorer from Mount Olive. She will continue being the leading point scorer from Mount Olive. Get, if you get her the ball, run a good offense, get the ball back to her. If you can't find the man down low, and get, let her make the three-point shot because she will majority of the time. And we have 40 seconds left here until we start the second half. The big names to look out for is Jordan Nataro and Madeline Hazen, as well as Mia Zebi for Mount Olive. Meanwhile, for Livingston, we'll be looking at Weinberger, we'll be looking at Lila Feldman, and we're looking at Jordan Frisco to facilitate that offense and allow the attack to happen. Exactly. I can't wait to see how this game turns around. We are almost 10 seconds away from coming back. If you will see, Mount Olive's team hasn't showed up yet, but Livingston is ready to take the court at any moment now. We expect to have a close second half here where Mount Olive competes, plays hard. I think one thing that has impressed me so far this game is the hustle that we see from the girls out there on the court. Jordan Frisco is everywhere. Madeline Hazen is everywhere. They're all trying to do all that they can to give their team the win. Here we go. Livingston coming out. Mount Olive back on the court. We are about to get started here. Livingston has their same five starters from the beginning of the game out. They have Aubrey Cohen, they have Jordan Frisco, they have Lila Feldman, they have Kylie Torin, and they have Weinberger. Meanwhile, for Mount Olive, they have Nataro, they have Hazen, they have Shaw, they have... Sarah Soli, I see you out there. And Sarah Soli, yes. Mount Olive attack, swings the ball out to number five. The shot, shot from up. Nataro is good. There we go. Sorry for saying that was Nataro. That was Madeline Hazen. Madeline Hazen with a three-pointer there to cut Livingston's lead down to six immediately. As Frisco swings the ball out. Aubrey Cohen with an open look, but she does not take it. And there's Lila Feldman swings the ball back out to Jordan Frisco, who finds Torin, but she misses her shot. And Madeline Hazen, there she is again, getting the rebound and fighting Nataro for the pass. Nataro swings it out. Mount all looking for an attack here. Nataro with the three. She bangs it! 23-20. The most important thing that a coach will tell me, because I have played basketball before, the most important thing a coach will tell you coming out of the half, if you are down, the first two scores are the most important scores of the half. If you're down, you want to get back in this game. Two scores went from being a nine-point game to a three-point game just like that, and now Mount has the ball again coming down the court and could potentially tie the game here right out of the gates in the second half. Mount Olive has all the momentum as Hazen and Nataro continue to work together well as a foul on Nataro yet again sends her to the line. We have really seen Hazen and Nataro lead the attack so far in the second half for Mount Olive as they put up six points immediately. And now... Here's Nataro at the line. Two shots. Her first shot is good. Nothing but nets. That is very impressive. It is, it is very impressive to make all of your foul shots. If she can make, keep making her foul shots, it will make the difference between this game. Trust me on that. 
Livingston with the backs against the wall here. The second shot, Nataro Good makes again. it to cut the lead from nine points to one point already. This is the closest it's been since five minutes in the first quarter. Livingston is really feeling the pressure as they swing the ball out to Feldman. She stares down Nataro, but decides to pass it back to Frisco. Frisco fakes some passes, tries to make something happen, gives it to Weinberger, who finds Feldman out and for the open three, and it is good! Livingston pushes the lead back to four. Good way to answer. Answer a three with a three. Livingston takes a little bit of a bigger lead now, hopefully stopping Mount Olive from a good drive here. And it was really Weinberger who led that attack there. She made, she found a beautiful open pass to Feldman to give her a shot, but Nataro comes out shooting and immediately answers with a two from the, three, from the free throw line to cut the lead back down to two points. That was a good answer from Nataro there to that three-pointer shot by Livingston. Cohen with the ball, swings it out to Frisco. Frisco is stuck in the corner, she can't do anything, but Livingston gets the ball back to their playmaker, Lila Feldman. She stares down Nataro. Those two really keep playing, she calls for a screen, Weinberger sets it. Tries to go for their pick and roll that scored last time, but no good. Livingston resets at the top of the key. Aubrey Cohen passes the ball to Frisco at the top of the key. Gives it to Torin, who finds an open Weinberger. The shot is up and it is just off the rim. I've noticed that Livingston has stopped their press. That is interesting. They've kind of laid off on defense. They want to press more when they get to the other half of the court. And a great drive by Jordan Nataro there to put two points. And it is very quickly a Livingston timeout as we are tied 26-26. Livingston's lead has already shrunk into nothing. What an answer from Mount Olive. Coming right out of the gates. Third quarter, I don't even think it's halfway done yet. Or actually, oh no, we got 50 seconds left. That's but, in the timeout. Oh, timeout, never mind. But you know what I mean. They have come out really quick. They've tied this ball game when it seemed like this ball game might have gone in Livingston's favor if they came out and answered a different way. Those first two buckets by Mount Olive really changed the tides of this game. And I, I can't wait to see if they take the lead here. Mount Olive's really worked through their best player, Jordan Nataro, here. I believe she's taken every single shot for Mount Olive besides the first one so far in this half, which was taken by Madeline Hazen. However, Madeline and Jordan keep working together well to penetrate through the Livingston defense, something that they were not able to do in the first half. Do you think that has something to do with how Livingston has changed up their defense, or has Mount Olive just warmed up? Uh, Livingston knows that if Nataro gets the ball, it might be a bucket every single time which is very difficult for them because with Mount Olive's throw around the horn office, she's going to get open eventually, no matter what type of defense Livingston puts on, which that can be really annoying for a defense when you have a scorer like that. Weinberger has made her presence known even more offensively in this third quarter, swinging the ball out to, for a huge three to Feldman, as well as making a bucket of her own. The ball is inbound into Frisco right around the Mount Olive logo as they slowly dribble up, looking for the open play. Finds Feldman on the wing. Swings it back to Viola. Viola struggling to find a pass, but she eventually finds Lila Feldman, who passes it all the way across the court to Frisco. Swings it back to Feldman. Feldman with the three. It is just off the ring rim, but a huge rebound there by Frisco. Keeps the ball in Livingston possession. They're going to need to keep getting those boards. That is how their offense worked in the first half. They have to have their big players like Weinberger and Tareen in the paint. Cohen, I mean, not Cohen, Viola passes the ball to Feldman, who swings it out to Frisco. Frisco finds Weinberger, Weinberger to Feldman, Feldman to Weinberger, Weinberger backing up, tries to get the layup, but it is and no good. Foul. It is a foul there, two shots at the line for Livingston. It will be Weinberger. These are some important foul shots right here. If Livingston takes the lead here, it can take a toll mentally on Mount Olive, knowing that they have to score. Now, so far this season, Weinberger has made all six of her free throw attempts. She has not missed one yet. Clearly the commentator's curse. She just <laughs> missed it. one. Well. That remains a tie. The second shot here for Weinberger. She tries to give Livingston a lead. The shot is up and does not oh, fall. Clearly a case of the commentator's curse there, and she missed both of those free throws to keep this game tied. And Mount Oliver is moving fast, trying to find some pressure on the counterattack. And it looks like it might have been a steal, but no. Mount Oliver retains possession on the loose ball. Finds the Taro on the wing who gives it back. The shot there is just missed, rejected by Frisco. Missed free throws like that can change an offensive mindset once they get the ball back. If Manov got the ball back there, they did almost turn it over the start of that uh, press down the court. But now that they got the ball back, knowing that they missed those two free throws, it gives Manov some confidence to try to score and take the lead. And However, Feldman with the corner three makes it 29 to 26 Livingston. She had the open look and she was not missing it. We will see if Mount Olive can respond here. Finds Caitlin Shaw. Shaw to Hazel. 
And Madeline Brain. Hazel with a three-pointer there. Sorry, Madeline Hazen, not Hazel. Keeps the game tied 29-29 as Feldman swings the ball out to Viola. Viola brings, gives it back to Feldman in the corner. They keep on working through her. The pass, Frisco at the logo, trying to reset for Livingston and find the opening to give them their lead back. Both teams here do want to win. They both have losing records on the season so far. Both teams really need this win, especially Mount Olive. They're, they don't have a win yet this season, but the way this game is going, this has potential for them to gain their first win of the season. But also as well, Livingston. And Weinberger had a point there for Livingston. She's open in the paint. Mount Olive, though, providing pressure on the countering attack, managing to keep the ball in bounds. The shot is upper finger roll and barely missed. Weinberger with yet another board. She seems to be everywhere for Livingston at the cast ball to Viola. And that will be a foul. Two more free throws for Livingston. And these are big shots here as Livingston with a two-point lead can start to really build on that. Making this game a two-score game can be important as we're rounding down around the three-minute mark of the third quarter. The shot, it will be Viola for Livingston. The first shot is good. She bangs that. Those rebounds by Weinberger are still happening throughout this second half. Manoff seems to really not have an answer for it so far. If they want to stop drives going down the court very fast, they need to stop letting her get rebounds and throwing it down the court. Manoff needs to work on their rebound game if they want to stay alive in this one. Viola misses her next free throw. And interestingly, Madeline Hazen has just checked out of the game for Mount Olive. Do we know, we wonder if she's saving a break, saving her legs for the fourth quarter? She might be. The offense now running through Caitlin Shaw and Jordan Nataro, as that was a travel, and Livingston will gain possession. We see Mia Zebi also entering the court here now from Mount Olive. She will really need to be big both defensively and especially in the, in the rebounding game as Mount Olive tries to shut down Livingston's attack here. If Mount Olive wants a chance to stop Weinberger from getting all these rebounds, Mia Zebi could be the answer here. The ball is swung up top to Feldman, who passes out to Frisco, who passes it to Tyrion. Feldman at the top of the key. She dribbles back, looking for an opening trying to make magic happen for Livingston. Passes to Viola. Lexi Viola swings it into Weinberger. Weinberger inside and misses it. And the rebound is made by Mount Olive as, as they are quickly moving down the court. Jordan Nataro with the ball. She cannot find something if she finds Mia Zebi in the paint. Zebi versus Weinberger. And Zebi comes down with the win. That makes it a 32-31 game. I mean, can't get the rebounds, make the shots. I mean, Zebby, if Zebby can work down low, stop and stop Weinberger from blocking a shot or getting a rebound, just make the shot, get extra points, and there's no rebound to be made. And Feldman with the fadeaway misses it, and Weinberger gets that rebound. She has been everywhere for Livingston, puts up a shot which is rejected. However, it looks like we have jump ball. a jump ball. That was Kylie Torine for Livingston, uh, for Livingston. And the jump ball goes to Sydney Livingston. Cesaroli. Livingston gets the ball as Feldman looks to inbound it. Zebi will continue to have to make a difference, shutting down Livingston's Weinberger, their biggest advantage so far this game. Frisco gets the ball on the top of the paint. She swings it out to, Col to Viola. Viola gives it to Feldman. Feldman back to Viola. They are not able to penetrate. And here we go, Zebi versus Weinberger again. And this time it looks to be a foul on Zebi as she reached in and made contact with Weinberger. It is not going to be free throws though, however. Let me see will inbound the ball in this 32 to 31 game. I do like the aggressiveness out of Zebi here. Fouls aren't always a bad thing if she's trying to get the ball and trying to stop this offense from putting up any more points. The three missed by Feldman there as Nataro bring the ball down court quickly. We have Viola on defense and she does not do her job, makes it. A huge point. That gives Mount Olive their first lead of the game. It is 33-32, Mount Olive. As this third quarter is rounding up, we have around 59 seconds left. Mount Olive has their first lead of the game. This could be big for them going into this fourth quarter. And there's, there's Feldman trying to make a difference. Not able. Weinberger gets the rebound, but is not able to make the shots. Livingston, however, never mind. That was a foul. Weinberger goes to the line, trying to put Livingston back on top here. Mount Olive up by one with 49 seconds left in this third quarter. It has been a tight back and forth game the whole time. Weinberger's first shot is good. 
that reties the game at 33 to 33. Livingston has a chance to take back the league here. Let's see if they do it. Weinberger's shot is up and bounces off the rim, but Torine with the rebound sends it and a huge point there. That was Kylie Torine. That's a huge rebound right there. That's one of those situations where Manolov needs to make that rebound if they don't want to lose the lead. However, Shaw bangs it, immediately answering with a three-pointer of her own. That was Madeline Hazen. I am sorry. Hazen gives the lead back to Mount Olive. It is 36-35. Mount Olive up by one with under 30 seconds left in this third quarter. And a turnover by Livingston and an immediate foul there by Weinberger on Hazen. Mount Olive will have the ball here with 19 seconds to go and looking to build on the lead that they've managed to take over in this third quarter. If they can get to at least a three or four point lead going to the fourth quarter and they start off strong, they could potentially take home the win today. And here comes Nataro. Does a crossover, sends it out to Hazen. Hazen back to Nataro. Nataro Hazen, Nataro Hazen. Top of the key. The shot is rejected. However, Mount Olive retains possession. They have five seconds exactly left in this quarter as they will look to make one last attempt. This could be an important point going into the fourth quarter here. If Mount Olive can retain a lead and go into the fourth quarter scoring points, this will be their game. Taro seems out to call a specific play. The pass to Hazen. It is up and it is just barely not good. Livingston comes down with the rebound and that will end the third quarter. That was a huge quarter for Mount Olive. What did you see mostly out of that quarter, do you think? Uh, I saw Mount Olive really applying pressure and making huge threes. Madeline Hazen and Jordan Nataro were really working together well to facilitate that offensive attack and to get around the big bodies that Livingston has in defense. We're going to need to see more of Hazen and Nataro working together in, this, in the last quarter of this game, as well as Mia Zebi truly coming in and making a difference both defensively and offensively. The body that she gives Mount Olive inside the paint to get the rebounds is like nothing else. I did see a huge increase in Mount Olive's offense that quarter. I do want to see more rebounds out of Mount Olive. There is still a little bit of lack when it comes to that. A lot of Livingston rebounds. If Mount Olive does want to secure a win in the fourth quarter, their offense has megally improved. Completely new offense, but Rebounds are going to win this game. That's completely true. Livingston dominated that first half because they always had the rebound. They were always getting the ball back and keeping the pressure on. In that first quarter of the second half, we saw that Falter and Mount Olive truly win the rebounding game. And because of that, they had a 10-point swing to go from being down nine to being up one at the start of this fourth quarter. Mount Olive's ball at the start of the quarter. Nataro starts with it, and Livingston has gone back to the press defense, it seems, applying pressure every step of the way. Swings the ball. Madeline Hazen, the freshman, just barely misses. Gives the, and Livingston gives the ball to Jordan Frisco, who brings the ball up court. We have just under eight minutes to go in this game as Livingston tries to get back. They were leading big at the half, and Mount Olive responded, and now it's all down to these last seven minutes. And Good turnover right there by Mount Olive. Seemingly uncharacteristic for Livingston. We haven't seen that much of it today. And Jordan Nataro blows past Viola, swings the ball to Hazen. Hazen's three is good. A huge three for Madeline Hazen to give Mount Olive a four-point lead with just seven minutes to go in this game. That was an impressive contested three. That three looked like it was very contested. There was no way it was going in, and she still found a way to put the ball in the net. She looks like she's practiced that shot a million times before. And another turnover for Livingston here to start the, to start the fourth quarter. And it's Nataro with the steal. Gives the ball... To and a missed layup. Oh, Weinberger angry ripping the ball there. Livingston, however, will retain possession because of Weinberger's aggressiveness. Jenna Klatt was not able to stop them. I mean, hey, you need aggressiveness in this sport, especially if you want to get all those rebounds like she has been getting. You need to play aggressive. You need to be angry, and you need to play like that through all four quarters of this game. She wants to win. And Viola brings the ball to Feldman, swings it back to Viola as there was no open look. Who gets the ball to Cohen at the top of the paint. The top, gives the ball to Toreen. And gives the ball back to Aubrey Cohen. Swings it back to Feldman at the top of the paint. Feldman over to Viola. Viola with the long two misses. And that goes straight out of bounds to give Mount Olive the ball back. Mount Olive can improve on this lead right now. 39 to 35 score. Another score here for Mount Olive could really start skewing this game in one direction. It seems that all of the pressure has been on Livingston in this second half as Mount Olive has come storming back, offensively scoring a ton, 
and defensively not allowing Livingston in. And there's Madeline Hazen, but Foul. she is fouled. And that will send her to the line with an opportunity to increase this Mount Olive lead. There's a good chance that we see another press come from Livingston here if, as we get closer and closer to the end of the game. It worked at the start of the game. It might work again if you start implementing it again when we reach these last minutes of the game. Mount Olive currently has their biggest lead of the game at four points, and they can really bury this Livingston team and crush their spirits here if these, if these free throws are made. The first one from Madeline Hazen is not good. We have a sub going. Off comes Viola, and in comes Ellie Kaplan for Livingston. The next free throw is good for Hazen, and that pushes Mount Olive's lead to five points with just over six minutes here to go. Livingston, Viola, really, Livingston really needs to lock in here if they want the win. They will. They've been had some uncharacteristic turnovers on offense and some bad shots. This fourth quarter has not given them anything offensively. However, they try to change that narrative as Cohen swings the ball to Feldman, who steps back, assesses the court, and tries to find the right move. Her game sense is truly elite. Weinberger gives it back to Cohen. Cohen with the three, just bounces off the rim. And we see, without Weinberger in the paint, they're not able to retain possession. However, they step the out immediate of bounds. press causes Mount Olive to step out of bounds, giving the ball back to Livingston. That is huge. If Livingston can score here, they can really shift momentum back in their direction. We are seeing a lot of threes bouncing off of the rim and not going in. Uh, that could be a result of stress or anything that comes down to these final minutes of the game. Weinberger open in the paint, misses up, and Toreen gets the rebound and puts it back. Livingston's two bigs working together there to not only find the open person, but then get the rebound and secure the basket, pushing it back to a three-point lead. Natara running down the court quickly. And a steal by Kylie Toreen for Livingston. That is huge, gives the ball to Ellie Kaplan. Ellie swings it over to Feldman. Feldman driving to the paint, but she is pushed out of bounds and it is a foul. We are starting to see a lot more aggressive defense from Livingston. It has worked at Mount Olive at the start of this game. It is probably going to work at the end of this game if Livingston wants us to win. It's a three point game. That is one shot that can change the result of this game. Lila Feldman heads to the line here with two shots, an opportunity to put Livingston back within striking distance. The shot is up and it is off. She seems disgruntled about that. She's not happy that that didn't go in. She's practicing her free throws beforehand, trying to really make this a two-point game and give Livingston a shot. Now, Feldman's second free throw attempt is up, and it is good. She makes that one to put it back to a two-point game. It is 40 to 38 here with five minutes left in the game. We are seeing the press come back from Livingston. The full court press worked in the first half. We'll see if it can work now. Passing the ball around is Mount Olive. Mataro has not left the game. Oh, and a oh. huge foul. That was yes. a foul. Two shots for Jordan Mataro here as she can give Mount Olive back to a four point lead. I do trust Jordan Mataro with these foul shots. Let's see what she can do. So far this, she, so far this season, she has made five points, five free throws coming into this game. And that first one is good. Falls in to give Mount Olive a 41-38 lead with just over five minutes remaining. These a shots do change games. A huge second free throw here. The shot is up. And it is no good. Weinberger gets the rebound and sends it to Cohen, who starts driving down the court. Livingston really needs a bucket here because Mount Olive's offense is rolling in this second half. I know we keep saying it, but Weinberg's level of rebounds is actual insanity for how many rebounds she has gotten this game. It seems every single rebound she's either there or almost there fighting for it. She has been a difference maker for Livingston today. If it's she wasn't here, it would be a different ball game. Almost all of Livingston's first half came, points came from Weinberger, but Feldman turns it over, Natara runs down the court. Natara with the layup. It is bounced off the backboard. Some good defense there by Ellie Kaplan keeps Mount Olive off the scoreboard. Still a three-point game here. Anyone's game still. Aubrey Cohen swings it to Feldman. Oh, and a turnover there. Weinberger was not able to retain that ball. It seemed it bounced off her face. That seems painful. There's Madeline Hazen giving the ball to Natara Natara with a three. And just it is missed. off. Just not there. Back to Hazen. Hazen with her three attempt. Just missed again. 
and they called a foul for some reason. I kind of thought they would just keep going there. I didn't see nothing, but it's okay. Livingston retains possession, it seems. It is. I think it is Livingston's ball here. Oh, no, it's Mount Olive's ball. Not quite sure what happened there, but Mount Olive's Jordan Nataro with the inbound. Passes it up to Hazen. Hazen drives, the paint. puts it up. It's not good, and Weinberger tips that to Kylie Torine to give Livingston the ball back in possession. We have three-point game separating here. Mount Olive is up by three with just under four minutes remaining. Without Mia Zebi on the court, no one's really putting up any fight to Weinberger on any rebound. Without Mia Zebi there, Weinberger can dominate within the paint, and it seems to be a foul for something on somebody. We'll let you know as soon as we know. But it seems Livingston will retain possession with an inbound pass and not free throws there. It was not a shooting foul, so they do not get their free throws. Oh, gives it right to Weinberger. Weinberger in the paint, puts up the layup, and it is good, making this a one-point game. Here comes the full court press, trying to get a basket here. Livingston, Mount Olive, 3.30 left. Mount Olive up by one. Both teams desperately trying to get their season back on track. And drives to the paint. It is rejected by Cohen. A huge block there and an immediate foul. That would be Gabby Drux. As we're oh, approaching that would the be Jenna Klatt fouling Aubrey Cohen there. As we're approaching the final three minutes of this game, I mean, a one-point game could go any way. I think it all depends on the next few baskets that are made right now to set the tone for how this game is going to end. What do you think Mount Olive needs to do in order to secure this victory and keep Livingston from completing their small comeback? I've said it a hundred times. I'll say it a hundred times more. You need to get rebounds. If Weinberger gets the ball on every single rebound, they're going to drive it down the court, and they're going to start making those baskets eventually. They may not be making all of them right now, but that doesn't always last when it comes to this sport. If she keeps getting rebounds, there can be a change of shift in this game, and Livingston can start making more and more of their baskets, putting Mount Olive away in this one. Livingston's first half was dominated and clearly focused on Weinberger. She got every single rebound. She allowed Livingston to continue to consistently attack, and despite not making all their shots, they, will, they were able to retain possession and put another shot up. I expect to see Mia Zebi back in the game here for the final few minutes as she has been influential in shutting down Weinberger. Mia Zebi has been the one to shut down Weinberger so far. No one else has really been able to shut her down besides Mia so far. And even still, with Mia and Weinberger still getting a majority of the rebounds, I do want to see if Mia Zebi goes back in this game to lock in and st finally start getting rebounds to help Mount Olive get this win. And yes, Weinberger is an aggressive and physical player. She leads the defense for Livingston, and we'll see if she can do something here. Feldman calls out a play to start here. 317 left in the game. Feldman swings it out. That would be Aubrey Cohen. Back to Feldman. Feldman over. Ellie Kaplan gets a look, gives it to Weinberger in the paint. Weinberger, a turnover there, but Kylie Torin gets the ball. And a foul? It looks on the like floor. It's on the foul floor. On the floor. Kylie Torin there having a huge steal there to keep the Livingston possession as it seemed Weinberger just could not find the pass she wanted. I'm pretty Feldman sure was that open. was a foul on Sarah Soli there. Sarah Soli with the foul and swings it up. Aubrey Cohen with the ball, gives it to Ellie Kaplan, gives it to Feldman, Feldman with the three. Just barely there, but Kylie Torin gets the rebound for Livingston. And, and a, a shove. shove in the back for Mount Olive. That will let Livingston keep possession. I don't know if they really care about that, however, because the team was in position to attack, and this gives them the, a, the chance for their defense to reset. And we have now reached the point that Manolov has so many fouls that has turned into one and one shots on fouls for now, so Manolov has got to watch out. A one and one shot means if the first one is made, she gets a second, and the first one, it is off. Oh, wait. Or is it just two shots? So no one really broke on that, but it didn't really look like that was a shooting foul on that one. 2.58 remaining in the game. Mount Olive Marauders, 41, Livingston Lancers. And we have a violation there as that free, that free throw, which would have tied the game, does not count because Livingston stepped inside of the paint. That keeps it a 41-40 game. Livingston have... losing by one to Mount Olive with 2.58 remaining. The full court press here comes out. Trying to overwhelm Mount Olive. Jordan Nataro keeps her cool and blows past Ellie Kaplan to get the ball in Livingston's half. They are moving around the ball, trying to find an opening, trying to not turn it over. A finger roll, it misses, uh, and Aubrey Cohen with the rebound. Livingston looking for a basket to desperately change the score of this game, trying anything they might 
and able to give themselves a lead and a victory. Gives the ball to Feldman at the top of the key, swings out to Cohen. Cohen with an open look, but passes it over. Feldman dribbles through, tries to get through, but that is Madeline Hazen rejecting her, saying you will not score. Gives the ball to Toreen. Toreen takes a dribble, Toreen takes a shot. It is not good. Weinberger is not able to come up with the rebound for Livingston there. As we have 2-13 left in the game. Mount Olive still leading by one point. Livingston's got to start making these shots if they want to win this game. That is a lot of shots that have either bounced off the backboard or hit the rim. If all of those shots, or at least half of those shots, get made, Livingston will have the lead in this one. And Mount Olive attacking here. Puts the ball up, the shot, but a travel. travel. A huge travel to give Livingston possession again. It is still just a one-point game. Mount Olive is holding on to a slim lead. Gives the ball around Feldman to Cohen. Cohen with the three. Makes Rain. it a huge three by Aubrey Cohen there to give Livingston a two-point lead. Immediately with back with the press. A minute 35 to go. The full court press is here. Ellie Kaplan, she swings the ball out. And Mount Olive here gives the ball to Madeline Hazen. It is a two-point game. Livingston is up. And they are trying to do anything they can here. Travel again. Travel. That would be Jenna Klatt. Two travels on her last two possessions. Livingston, a minute 20 to go as a two-point lead. This has been a back-and-forth battle. We've seen lead changes. We've seen swings. We've seen comebacks. Let's see what this final minute brings us here. Gives the ball to Feldman. Feldman holds on, looking for an opening. Gives it back to Cohen. Cohen out. To Kaplan, oh. and that is a foul. They fouled her on purpose there, it seems, in order to stop Livingston is trying to kill the clock there. I mean, that is what you should be doing here. With a very, very friendly shot clock, why not? However, these are some big free throws as Livingston with a two-point lead can put the game into a two-score one here. The first shot by Kaplan is off the back of the rim. That is a huge, huge sigh of relief for Mount Olive. Kaplan practicing her free throws as she prepares to try to give Livingston a three-point lead here with only a minute and three seconds left in this game. Kaplan's shot is good, giving Livingston a three-point lead. That is a very sad thing to see for Mount Olive. Oh, we have a stop of the clock, we and we have a timeout. Mount Olive calls a timeout here with a minute and three seconds left in the game. Seeing that free throw being made is kind of a kick for Mount Olive. Seeing that they're now down by three, that is a three-pointer that they have to make. They have been making this game, but any anyone would rather take a two-pointer to tie it instead of having to make a three in order to tie it. It's a lot more stressful, especially with the clock ticking down by second by second by second, which is the last minute of the game. You don't want to have to make a three in order to tie it. And we've seen Mount Olive continuously fight in this game. They were down by nine at half. They had a huge swing to take the lead coming into this fourth quarter. And now with their backs against the wall with just barely over a minute left, they hope to close this lead and take home the W. The press from Livingston seems to have been working on Mount Olive. They have having aggressive de defense for the full court. Even when they get down to the basket, there's just heavy defense. Mount Olive hasn't really made that many shots down there either. We've been seeing a lot more defense on both sides and offense this last quarter. Yes, we have. Let's see if that trend continues here. Livingston continuing with the full court press as they try to not let Mount Olive get, every, get anything. And Lila Feldman switches on there, trying to lead the defense herself. Ellie Kaplan on Jordan Nataro, and Nataro finds herself on the find someone on the wing, passes it up to the top of the key, the drive, and a huge steal, but no. Foul. A foul there by Aubrey Cohen. Let's Mount Olive retain possession. You know it, as soon as I got on here, one of the first things I think I remember I said was that free throws will help the game. If Mount Olive can get more free throws here, this could change the tide of the game. Madeline Hazen with a two-pointer is just barely missed, and Aubrey Cohen comes down with the rebound. Now we see Mount Olive applying a full court press with only 35 seconds left in the game. That is swung out. Oh, an immediate oh. foul on by Jordan Mataro on Aubrey Cohen. That sends Livingston to the line here. These foul shots might decide the game here. If both of these shots get made, this might be time for Mount Olive to start throwing in the towel. It's a three-point game here. If one of these shots gets made, it would completely change everything. Aubrey Cohen's first shot 
is Miss. off the back of the rim. It is no good. This shot will change the tides of the game completely. Mount Olive takes a small sigh. However, as things are still very tense, as this made free throw will make it a four-point game with only 31 seconds left. It is up, and it, it is, is made. Good. Aubrey Cohen with a huge, huge free throw for Livingston. Another timeout called here. Mount Olive really needs to regroup. If they want to score four points before this game is over, that is just a three and a two. If they can start full court pressing, just like Livingston has, if they can get a steal on the press, this could be go in Mount Olive's favor. However, Coach Redmond really needs to set up a defense and offense here that could work for these last 30 seconds of the game. And if you think that four points in 31 seconds is not possible, you will be very incorrect. As we saw Mount Olive score six points in just that same amount of time to start the second half. They will not need that much, but they will need something to give here. Livingston's prepping their defense. Expect to see Toreen and Weinberger really not allowing anything fall. Anything can happen here. This game isn't set in stone as a win for Livingston yet. Mount Olive still has a pretty good chance to turn this around. However, Livingston needs to lock in their defense here. Weinberger needs to get every rebound here if they want to win. However, Mount Olive needs to work on the rebound game. Even though Weinberger's gotten every rebound of the game, that can change here. And these are the most important rebounds of the game if Mount Olive misses a shot. We see the teams going out for their final time with only 31 seconds left. Livingston, 45. Mount Olive, 41. This is a close back and forth game, which we get to see the end of here. It is Mount Olive's ball, I believe. As Full they court will, press is on the court. Mount Olive will attempt to quickly score as they need four points here. Gives the ball away, hits the ball, passes the ball, dribbling up the court, not looking to pass, not wanting to make a lousy pass and lose the ball, gives the ball, finding in the corner number four for, oh, in the paint, in a huge, oh, that miss. is off on Mount Olive. And it is Livingston's ball. That gives ball. Livingston the ball here with 15 seconds left in a 45 to 41 game. We are now seeing the full court press from Mount Olive. Ellie Let's Kaplan see if they can get a turnover. The ball. And it is Lila Feldman. She brings the ball up and she is fouled with 10 seconds left. That could have just killed the game right there. You do need to foul in that scenario. You better hope that they miss these shots here. You have 10 seconds left. A miracle can happen here, but it's starting to seem a little more unlikely as the clock keeps ticking down. Livingston sends Lila Feldman to the line here. A chance to ice the game. Her first shot is good, making it 46-41 Livingston. In the final seconds of this one, she has one more, takes a deep breath, prepares herself. Lila Feldman's shot is up, and it is not good, but the rebound by Kylie Toreen and they're allows holding Livingston it. to keep possession there, just holding onto the ball, trying to not get fouled and end this game. This will be all, and that will be a 46-41 to 41 Livingston Lancers victory over the Mount Olive Marauders. What did you see from this game? I saw a great job by Livingston on their defense. The press defense has worked flawlessly this game. They did, when they did lay off of it around the end of the first half and the beginning of the second half, that's when you saw Mount Olive's offense really start to take shape and score more points. But once they started putting the full court press back on, started playing a more aggressive defense, we did see Mount Olive fall apart again. That adjustment wasn't really made by Mount Olive's offense. Uh, I, in the future, I would like to see Mount Olive's offense work on those types of uh, plays more, trying to stop teams like Livingston from playing that full court press and it working when they do. That is true. With that ending, Livingston moves to two and six on the season. Some a big game by Feldman and Weinberger gives them the win. And Mount Olive, despite good efforts by Nataro and Hazen, falls to 0 and 7. Who did you see this game that really put on a stellar performance on both sides here? Well, it was Weinberger and Feldman for Livingston and it was Nataro and it was Hazen for Mount Olive. Well that is all we have for you here from the beautiful Mount Olive High School gym. I'm Asher Solidar, joined I'm Peter by. Zakalula. We hope you've enjoyed this game, and we will see you later.